Hey YouTube world, welcome to my channel, Ace Relay Entertainment. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Ace Relay. I've been studying magic for 25 years now. And I found this old magic book in my attic. It's called The World's Greatest Magic it's from 1976. And inside there's 31 magicians. And I chose this magician, Tony Slidini, to talk about today. So let's get to it. Just hit a button, Morty. Give me a beat. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Um. What's up, guys? One of the first magic tricks I ever learned was a Tony Slidini magic trick. Just a basic coin vanish. You see where it went? I didn't see it. Oh, look. You're right there in the fabric. I do another one of Tony Slanini's tricks in my other video. I showed a trick to my kids at Apple Hill. At least check that out. Okay, guys, so like I was saying, this book was written in 1976 by Hala M. Clark and was publisher is Bruce Mitchell. And there's 31 magicians in this book. I chose to talk about Tony Slidini, one of the greats in magic history. Uh, here's a picture of the man doing a close-up routine with the cigarette. The demolished cigarette restores it just by running his finger over it. You see the spectators watching really close. All right. Tony Slidini is known in the trade as a magician's magician. A magician's magician does not perform magic so esoteric that only other conjurers can appreciate it. Rather, his presentation so amplifies the skills of the art that all magicians can learn from watching him. To Slidini, this is as it should be. My work is teaching, he says. He has been a teacher of magic in New York City since 1947. In addition, he has appeared on television and performs occasionally in nightclubs, but mostly he lectures to groups of magicians and tutors individual pupils. I have too many students, he says. I can't take them all. Slidini's magic highlights the technique of superb misdirection. Not surprisingly, it was the psychology of the art that attracted him in the beginning. Slidini's father was an amateur magician in Italy, and the boy was fascinated by the relationship between the magician and his audience. When his family moved to Argentina, Slidini began to experiment with magic himself. In Argentina, he says, I created my own magic. There were many ways to go. I went the right way. I created magic, and it was essentially the same kind as I do now. There was work for a teenage magician in vaudeville in South America for a time, but soon the depression hit. Even movie houses were having price wars. In 1930, Slidini moved to New York City. It was hard there, he's too, he says. I couldn't speak English. I had a hard time. Finally, I found work in a museum that had just opened on 42nd Street. After they saw me work, they told me I could stay as long as I liked. Then I found work in carnivals, but I had to start over. One Christmas, Slidini went to Boston to visit his sister. He saw an agent there while seeking work. Look, the agent told him, I haven't got anything, and I don't know your work. All I have is a show at a church for some old folks. I'll give you five bucks for expenses if you want to do it. I felt good, says Slidini. It was something. So I went to the church with my suitcase. There was nobody there, not a soul. I went to the dressing room and finally a man came. I asked him when the show started. I don't know, he said. After a while, I asked him what time it was. I don't know, he said. He was putting on makeup. So I asked him what the lineup was. I don't know, he said. The church started to fill, so I got dressed. I found they put me in second, excuse me, on second in case I was terrible, but I got a big ovation. Afterward, the man I had tried to talk with came up to me and said, what are you doing here? He asked me to meet him in Boston at one o'clock the following Tuesday. He didn't say why. Tuesday, it snowed. I didn't know whether to go or not. My sister's home was outside of Boston. Finally, I decided to go. It was awful weather. I was half an hour late, but he waited for me in the snow. He took me to an agent, RKO. This is him, he said. 
They gave me a contract for three days in Quincy at $15 a day. I was elated. Then I went to another agent and signed another contract. I worked steadily in Boston for seven years, but I couldn't stay there all my life. Hey, my friend said, what are you doing in Boston? So I went back to New York. When Slidini started in Boston, close-up magic was not performed as it is today. It wasn't until he attended a magic convention in New Orleans in 1945 that he unveiled his special conjuring. The world didn't recognize the close-up art then, he says. No one knew I had this beautiful thing. Even magicians know what it was. Excuse me. Even magicians didn't know what it was. When I went to New Orleans, I had a standing ovation for 20 minutes. Slidini's magic is different, they said. Since that time, Slidini has toured the United States and lectured in every country in Europe. If someone doesn't know me now, he says, he is not a magician. The basics of close-up magic, of course, were not new, but Slidini's style was new. Slidini was one of the first to present close-up magic as a self-contained art rather than an advertisement for bigger effects. In his work, there are no lingering vestiges of the pinchman. Slidini's magic is impromptu. He does not have a set sequence of tricks but allows his audience and the situation to determine his program. His courtesy is continual, and his soft-spoken patter is charming. He continually understates his case. I don't like to disturb people, he says. They don't know what I'm going to ask or how to answer me, so I deal with only one person. I let the rest of the audience relax and experience. In this gentle aura, the force of Slidini's personality is startling. This quiet man rests attention so completely that his audience is prevented from discovering how he makes his moves. The paper balls trick demonstrates this process. In this trick, the person working with Slidini cannot see what is going on, but the rest of the audience can. Slidini crumples one piece of paper after another, effortlessly making each one disappear for the participant's eyes. But every time the audience can see him toss the paper ball over the man's head. Eventually, this causes laughter, and the participant looks over his shoulder to see the crumpled paper on the floor. Still, he cannot observe Slidini. You don't see? he asks the magician. No, the man replies. You know why? Because you don't look. Slidini particularly enjoys playing before other magicians. He delights in such a challenge and enjoys fooling his colleagues. The magicians sit in the front row, he says, they want to see a trick over and over again. But he is also sensitive to a lay audience. I do a trick better, he says, if I like the trick. But if they like it and I don't like it, I will do it for them anyway. To a master magician like Slidini, magic is a great deal more than just doing tricks. His intricate performances take place on so many levels, you have to know all the details, he says. Something is happening all the time. You have to understand every moment. You have to know how to hold people, how to entertain them. You must be aware of the common sense of things, the movements of the body, where to look and how to sit or stand. After watching Slidini pass a coin through a table, restore a torn cigarette, or do some wonder with cards, the audience is breathless. The intelligence of his magic lingers. His work is graceful, precise, and baffling. At first glance, the premise seems simple. Yet, like most things that appear simple, Slidini's magic is deep and complex. So, just to follow up with this, guys, he's one of the great magicians of all time, a master of misdirection. And misdirection is a big part of magic. Uh, one of his good tricks he does is the helicopter card. So, please check that trick out. Helicopter card. Coins through the table. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please like and subscribe. Oh, you can